Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, today we are going to learn about the lower respiratory tract. Uh, in this slide, you can see the lungs and the trachea. The lower respiratory tract starts from the lungs and ends on the terminal bronchiole. You can also uh, say that the lower respiratory tract starts from trachea and ends on the alveolar duct. The pathway from the trachea to the alveolar duct represent the lower respiratory tract. Um, okay. The trachea, first of all trachea, it starts from trachea. Trachea starts below this structure. This structure is called larynx. The, and this structure is called trachea. This is trachea. Uh, trachea is also called simply a windpipe. Uh, and this starts from the larynx and ends on the bronchi. This is right bronchi and this is left bronchi. This is uh, almost 5 inch in length approximately. Now, while the diameter is round about 1 inch, 1 inch diameter. This is made up of smooth muscles, fibrous tissues and uh, C-shaped uh, cartilages. The C-shaped cartilages. Uh, in this cross section and this diagram, this diagram represents the cross section of uh, this trachea as well as the esophagus. You can see that the esophagus lies dorsally to the trachea, and this trachea is made up of C shaped cartilage. This is C shaped cartilage. This is not a complete ring, and this, you know, this also have some smooth muscle. This also have some smooth muscle. This is not a complete uh, ring. But the cartilages are not in complete ring. This is also to give space to the uh, esophagus and the esophagus lies dorsally uh, to the trachea. Uh, similarly, the this and this trachea um, also consists of a mucus layer uh, internally and uh, below the mucus layer there are epithelial cells and these are not simple epithelial cells these are these are ciliated epithelial cells uh, the ciliated epithelial cells are responsible for the continuous wiping motion <coughs> for continuous wiping uh, moment or motion uh, these ciliated cells are present uh, in the trachea as well as in the bronchi uh, though uh, this um, this trachea is bifurcated over here. This is bifurcated over here and divided into two bronchi, the right bronchus and the left bronchus. Now, this bifurcation, this point, this point is called carina. This point is called carina. Simple. Okay, uh, you can see over here in this diagram, uh, this, this bronchi. The right bronchus and left bronchus goes into the hilum of the lung. This is right lung and this one is left lung. Uh, you can also see that the right lung is a bit uh, greater in size as compared to the left lung. Uh, the right lung consists of three lobes and this one, this one and this one. Superior lobe middle lobe and inferior lobe while the left lung only consists of superior and inferior lobe the lobes are divided into uh, uh, into these this lung is divided into three lobes with the help of uh, these fissure these fissure this is called uh, this is called horizontal fissure and this is called oblique fissure this is called oblique fissure in the right lung, the horizontal fissure um, is present, while in the left lung, there is no horizontal fissure. Uh, in the right lung, there is oblique fissure, and the left lung also consists of oblique fissure. Uh, you can also see over here that this area, this area uh, is some, somewhat contracted in form. Uh, and, uh, and represent a notch like structure and this is called cardiac notch this is a space this represents a space for the accommodation of heart and this area is called cardiac notch this area of the lung is called cardiac notch and this is responsible for the accommodation of heart and because the heart lies over here the heart lies in this area the heart lies in this area 
now obliquely okay uh, you can also see over here that uh, the um, this strike yeah, uh, ends on the right bronchus and left bronchus the right bronchus and left bronchus goes into the uh, enters this part of the this part of the of the lung this is superior superior lobe ends on the superior lobe this superior lobe uh, consists of a, a, a hilum shaped structure over here that is called hilum um, and invagination over here that invagination uh, on this point and this point is called um, hilum uh, just like in the kidney kidney also consists of hilum <coughs> So uh, this uh, hilum is represented uh, by uh, invagination. Uh, okay, uh, I'm also going to brief you regarding uh, an important point over here in this uh, slide. Uh, you can see over here that uh, this is this is trachea, this is right bronchus, and this is left bronchus. The right bronchus is uh, having large diameter as compared to the left one. Uh, the the length of the right bronchus is also somewhat uh, large than the left one but uh, you can see that the diameter of the right bronchus is comparatively very large than the uh, than the left one uh, this is because of the size of the the right and left lung the right lung is having large size and the left lung is having small size the right one is having large number of lobules, large number of uh, segments and large number of um, lobes while the left one is having only two lobes okay and this uh, this right lung is uh, having uh, you can see over here that this uh, bronchus is having large diameter and this is divided into large number of uh, large number of branches now this is also you can see that divided into large number of branches but these branches are comparatively small in number as compared to this one now i am going to talk about this point later there is an, an, an important point over here you can also see over here that this goes a bit vertically and this goes a bit obliquely the left lung uh, receive this uh, uh, lip bronchi, uh, lip bronchus, obliquely. This goes obliquely, while this goes, this do not go obliquely. This goes uh, a bit vertically. This is not uh, completely vertical, but this goes uh, a bit vertically, and this goes uh, somewhat obliquely. Uh, I'm going to discuss this at the end. This point, okay? Now uh, the bronchi and the bronchioles the bronchi and this is the this represent the lip bronchi and the lip bronchus this lip bronchus is called the primary bronchus this is called primary bronchus this primary bronchus goes to the lung this goes to the lung with the help of hilum this goes to the lung with the help of uh, hilum this is wider and straight in the light right lung uh, as i have told you in the previous one this is no, this is wider than the left one uh, in the right one this is wider in the left one this is not wider this is a bit narrow and this goes a bit straight and this goes a bit oblique uh, okay and uh, this now this uh, primary bronchus which goes to the lung over here there is lung this is divided into uh, secondary bronchi this is divided into this is secondary bronchi and this is secondary bronchi this is secondary bronchiole and this is secondary bronchiole combined it is uh, called bronchi okay this goes to the separated lobe this goes to a separate lobe this uh, bronchi goes to the this bronchus goes to the superior lobe and this goes to the inferior lobe this goes to the inferior lobe so the secondary bronchi or the secondary bronchus will always lead to the lobe for example in this you can see that uh, one lobe is th th this one and one lobe is this one 
so this lobe this bronchi this is this is secondary bronchi this will goes to this lobe and this will goes to this lobe okay and this one uh, you can see that uh, this is divided this uh, bronchus is divided into one bronchus over here and over here this is divided into two bronchus because the these two bronchus lead to these two these two lobes so these are secondary bronchi are secondary bronchus okay now the, the secondary bronchus will always lead to the lobe to the lobe and the right lung there will be two then the right lung there will be three secondary bronchi or in the left lung there will be two secondary bronchi these are also called lower bronchi these are also called lower bronchi because these lead to the lobes of the lungs uh, the the and the third order this uh, uh, this is divided into tertiary bronchi this 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 is divided into tertiary bronchi this is tertiary bronchi and this these are tertiary bronchi these are tertiary bronchi these are tertiary bronchi when the bronchus divides and subdivide the, the division the um, the direct uh, division of uh, bronchus leads to the tertiary bronchi the direct division of the secondary bronchus leads to the tertiary bronchi and these tertiary bronchi uh, leads to the small segment of the lobe a small segment of the lobe the lobe is further divided into small segments and that's the segment uh, uh, is provided by the tertiary bronchi or tertiary bronchus so the tertiary bronchus are responsible for the provision of uh, connection to the to the segment to the segment the tertiary bronchi are responsible for the provision of the connection to the segment segment of the lobe there are many number of uh, large number of segments in each lobe large number of segments in each lobe which vary from individual to individual okay mm, then in each segment there is a lobule in each segment there is a lobule which is divided which is um, which is provided by the bronchiole uh, which is provided by the bronchiole um, you can also see over here that uh, the tertiary bronchi that the tertiary uh, bronchus is further divided into other smaller bronchi smaller bronchi which is also divided further into smaller bronchi then smaller bronchi then smaller bronchi and uh, lastly it leads to bronchiole the bron in the bronchiole there is no there is no cartilage this blue color this light blue color represent the cartilages uh, and uh, in the bronchiole there is no cartilage when the uh, division and subdivision of the uh, bronchi leads to uh, leads to a tube which do not contain any which do not contain uh, any hyaline sheet which do not contain any uh, cartilage that is called bronch bronchiole uh, bronchiole are very narrow in size and that bronchiole now from this area the bronchiole started and these are called terminal bronchiole terminal bronchiole these terminal bronchiole uh, are further divided into um, small tubes which are called respiratory bronchiole uh, from where which is surrounded by the bronchiole the part of the bronchiole which is surrounded by the capillary by various capillaries these are called respiratory bronchiole because the respiration or the exchanges of gases can take place over there now the part of bronchiole where the exchange of gases take place are called terminal are called respiratory bronchiole and the right respiratory bronchiole is further divided into the uh, alveolar bronchiole and those alveolar bronchiole leads to the alveolar sac uh, shortly i can uh, say that uh, from trachea to the uh, to the alveolar bronchiole from trachea to the end point which leads to the alveolar sac uh, is divided and subdivided and to 25 division order this this division order leads to 25 order 25 division from trachea up to the uh, terminal bronchiole 25 order of branches uh, a branching uh, take place over here now um, in this uh, diagram you can see that these are the terminal bronchiole 
which start from the which start below the the smallest bronchi the smallest bronchi and these terminal bronchioles uh, then leads to the respiratory bronchioles these are respiratory bronchioles where the you can see over here that the capillary which is surrounded by the capillaries and which uh, which is having a thin layer and which uh, where the exchange of gases can take place where the respiration ta can take place and after the respiratory bronchiole you can see these 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 are the alveolar bronch uh, duct these are called alveolar duct these alveolar duct lead to the alveolar sac this is these are alveolar sac this is a separate sac a group of alveoli which consists of group of alveoli that is called alveolar sac the each alveolar sac is provided by the alveolar duct each alveolar sac is provided by the alveolar duct and you can see over here this is this represent a lobule this represent a lobule each lobule is provided with a by a terminal bronchiole each lobule is provided by a terminal bronchiole and each lobule is having a separate an intact layer which is divided um, from each other by this layer each lobule is divided from each other you can uh, you can see by microscope and you can see by naked eye the um, a very a very clear um, division of the of the lobule inside the lungs okay these uh, bronchioles these uh, terminal bronchiole divide into uh, respiratory bronchiole and this respiratory bronchiole divide into alveolar duct and these alveolar duct lead to a sac like structure uh, the, which is called which is called alveolar sac and this alveolar sac uh, contain large number of alveoli large number of alveoli which are round shaped structure and each one is called uh, alveolus each alveolus is a uh, thin membrane structure which is round in shape and which is uh, having um, the mesh up uh, which is surrounded by a mesh and network of the capillaries which is surrounded by the network of capillaries and where the exchange of gases take place so uh, in this uh, in each uh, in each alveolar sac each alveolar sac uh, is having a midpoint. Each alveolar sac is having um, a, a, an area where the um, where where these alveoli are connected, and these uh, that gap gap-like structure in between them is called atrium. Atrium. So this point is called atrium. This point, this midpoint is called atrium, or this point is called atrium. Uh, you can see uh, in this diagram also no okay this this is a single alveolus this is a single alveolus this represents a single alveolus this uh, alveolus you can see over here that uh, um, these consist of uh, uh, this this is capillary this is this is capillary this is uh, this goes all around the all the alveoli and uh, where there is capillary there the wall of the alveolus is very thin where the exchange of gases which uh, carry out the exchange of gases the carbon dioxide and oxygen you can also see over here that uh, there is a macro page a large number of macro pages are there in each and every alveolus which is responsible for the engulfing of any foreign material um uh, the blood flow the blood supply um, is very much uh, in perfusion in each and every alveoli uh, which are the terminal one okay and this uh, you can see over here this is alveolus and this alveolus leads to the atrium this alveolus leads to the atrium and this atrium further leads to the alveolar duct this the, each alveolus uh, each compartment of the alveolus or each uh, lumen of the alveolus leads to the atrium and each atrium leads to the alveolar duct and each alveolar duct then leads to the uh, term, uh, to the respiratory bronchiole and each respiratory bronchiole leads to the uh, terminal bronchiole and each terminal bronchiole leads to the bronchi. Uh, so this is the uh, division which uh, start from trachea up to the uh, alveolar duct. Uh, so over here you can also see that you know, each 
this this is alveolar this one this is alveolus this is alveolus and this is alveolus. these three alveolus uh, are interconnected with the help of this this area this area is called atrium this area is called atrium um, while this area this duct is called this duct is called alveolar duct and uh, when the um, absorption of oxygen takes place over here uh, then the uh, then the evacuation or then the uh, exhalation of carbon dioxide also takes place over here which uh, crosses this layer and which uh, goes through this way uh, to the alveolar duct then the respiratory bronchiole then the uh, terminal bronchiole and then to the bronchus and then to, uh, to the bronchi and then to the uh, secondary bronchi and then to the primary bronchi and then to the trachea. Uh, I am also going to discuss a very important point over here. In this diagram you can see that uh, this is a right bronchus and this is left bronchus. The right bronchus uh, is mm, you can see over here that the right bronchus is somewhat straight somewhat straight but this one is somewhat oblique so the infection the chances of infection to the right lung is comparatively large in an individual you can see over here that this one this is having large diameter this is having large diameter one point is this one this is large diameter the second point is this is somewhat straight and this is oblique this is always oblique and this is somewhat straight so the chances of uh, entrance of various microbes to the right lung is greater as compared to the left lung and the chances of infection of the lung of the right lung is uh, greater as compared to the uh, left lung